Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to STEAM Camp. My name is Miss Adrian. I'm the Children's Librarian at the Foster City Library, which is one of the San Mateo County Libraries. And today I'm going to be hosting a STEAM Camp session um, about easy snacks, easy cooking um, that children can do themselves. I think that the recipes we're going to be making today are going to be age um, and developmentally appropriate for children who are in second grade and up. I think a kindergartner and a first grader could definitely make what we're going to make with adult help and adult supervision. Um, the only cooking instruments we're going to use today um, for heating purposes are a microwave and a toaster oven. If you don't have a toaster oven, you can get an adult, uh, your adults help with using a traditional oven, um, but definitely use, uh, you definitely get adult help with that. Um, and if you don't have a microwave, um, you could probably do what we need to do on a stove top. But again, ask adults for adult help with that. But hopefully everyone has a microwave and a toaster oven that they can use. Um, yeah, this is part of our STEAM Camp series. STEAM Camp is something that we've been doing for quite a while now um, with programs in the morning and the afternoon for uh, children um, to keep up with their science, technology, engineering, art, and math over the summer. Um, and cooking is definitely a fun art form and there's definitely some math involved when you're measuring. So I hope that you enjoy this, um, this session of STEAM Camp. If you haven't signed up for summer or summer learning challenge yet, don't forget there's at least a week left for you to fill out one log and um, you can sign up at summerlearners.org. Okay, so let's get started. Today we're making two different recipes. Um, and before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about food safety. So um, before you get started uh, cooking anything, make sure you wash your hands. Um, Wash your hands for 20 seconds with lots of soap, um, warm water, and then rinse your hands and dry your hands. Um, if during the course of your cooking you should sneeze or cough or um, touch your face, go ahead and wash your hands again, especially if you're preparing food for someone else. That'll help um, not spreading any sort of foodborne illness. Um, and additionally, you want to make sure that your um, your Food prep area is also clean and sanitized. So um, if your adults in your house um, or your older siblings um, have been doing anything in the kitchen recently involving um, raw eggs or meat, raw meat, um, make sure that they have sanitized the area that you're going to work on to make your snacks. Um, and you can always just double check by asking an adult or um, asking an adult to clean uh, and sanitize the, t the countertop for you before you begin your food prep. Um, otherwise, you know, you can just wash down your, um, if you're uh, able to just wipe off your countertop with some soap and water and that should be good. Um, it's not going to sanitize, but it should um, clean your, your work area um, before you get started. Okay. Oh, and additionally, um, make sure that when you have your food, um, before you use it, um, make sure that it is fresh, it is um, packaged properly, and um, it doesn't have any sort of, um, you know, uh, oddities about it. So make sure that if you have a can or a jar that you're going to open, um, the jar should um, pop up. That's the way you'll know that it, it, it was uh, not opened. They have these lids. Um, and you can always ask adults to check out the food that you're about to make before you, um, before you use it, you know, because you just want to make sure, like in the case of something like a string cheese, you want to make sure that um, the packaging, that it's properly packaged, right? So this is sealed. There's no holes in it. Um, just just do a, a quick inspection of the food that you're about to uh, use before you use it to cook and before you eat it. Okay? All right. So let's make our first recipe, which is English muffin pizzas. So I have here, this is a pretty simple recipe. I have here my English muffin. You're going to need some mozzarella cheese. I'm going to use a cheese uh, stick. 
but you could use shredded mozzarella cheese, you could use a brick of mozzarella cheese, any of that is fine. And then you're just gonna need some um, tomato sauce. I've just got some regular pasta sauce here that we're gonna use for our um, English muffins. So English muffins are great because you don't have to um, cut them with a knife. English muffins, you can usually um, break apart with your hands. So it's another good reason to make sure that your hands are clean. So if you start, you'll see English muffins sort of break open in the middle um, all by themselves. So you're just gonna use your thumbs to break it apart. And you just wanna be kind of gentle about this. If you're too quick, you might rip the English muffin. But um, so now that you have your English muffin in two parts, you're going to go ahead and use your, get your tomato sauce with a spoon. Take a nice big spoonful of tomato sauce here and then use the back of your spoon to spread it around your English muffin. All right, and then we'll do the other one. And we're gonna spread it around to make sure that we've covered our whole English muffin with sauce. If you didn't want to use tomato sauce, um, you could probably use something like pesto if you don't like tomatoes, okay? So I'm gonna put my lid back on here. And this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get cheese. I'm gonna use my um, mozzarella cheese stick here. But shredded mozzarella really is probably the best thing, um, the easiest thing to have. And you can buy that at the store. It's pre-shredded. I like the mozzarella sticks, though, because you can sort of shred it with your hands. So you pull off a string and then just position it on your, on your, your um, little English muffin here until the whole English muffin is going to be covered with cheese. Here we go. And try and keep, uh, if you're using a mozzarella cheese stick, try and keep the, um, you know, the strings or the shreds um, thin enough that they're all gonna melt um, together when you put them in the toaster oven. Okay. So we'll finish that later. And then you can see I've got my whole English muffin pizza covered with cheese. And I'm going to go ahead and pop these in the toaster oven. Um, my toaster oven only has three settings, um, light, medium, and dark. I would go ahead and put um, my, um, my uh, setting on dark for this because it's not just bread or toast. It's also we have to melt the cheese. So I'm going to put it on for its highest setting. Um, if you have an English, or excuse me, if you have an English muffin. If you have a toaster oven that has different settings than the type that I have, you're going to have to ask an adult to help you um, estimate how long you're going to want to put that in the oven. Okay, so let me clean up my area from making the pizza. And now we're going to move on to our second, um, our second food. So our second um, activity we're going to do while our English muffin pizza is getting um, cooked in the toaster oven. The second thing we're going to do is something called um, uh, cinnamon cream cheese snails. And what you're going to need for this recipe is um, you're going to need um, some butter, cinnamon, sugar, cream cheese, some type of bread, and um, measuring spoons and two, two bowls and a knife. So if you need to go get those things, go ahead and Pause the video and um, we will um, and go and get your supplies and then join me back here. Okay, I'm gonna get started. 
So here is my bread. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bread and um, we're going to spread the bread with cream cheese. And you could theoretically probably use something other than cream cheese if you wanted. Um, butter might work, soft butter or a was the other thing I was thinking? Peanut butter might work. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my cream cheese and just give it a nice thin spread here on my, on my bread. So the, the whole bread is covered with cream cheese. And I'm sorry, I apologize for anyone who, um, you know, is, uh, is milk, has a milk allergy. These, Recipes are definitely not um, dairy free. Um, they definitely have dairy, they definitely have gluten. Um, but like I said, you could do some substitutes. And um, if you are someone who is dairy free, I would ask your adults if, you could, if they could um, help you brainstorm some dairy substitutes that might work just as well as the um, cream cheese that I'm about to use, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead now and cut my toast, or excuse me, my bread that's been covered in cream cheese into strips. So you're just gonna make as many strips, they're about a, an inch wide, many strips as you feel like you'd like to make. I've got four strips here. And once you've got your, your um, bread uh, cut into strips, we're gonna go ahead and roll them up like little snails. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll that up. Until it makes a little roll, cute little roll there. And we're gonna repeat that with all of our little uh, strips here. Gonna make a little snail. A little snail. Here's another little snail. You could use um like a cinnamon raisin toast for this if you wanted. I have like a whole wheat bread, but um, cinnamon raisin toast might be tasty. So once you've made all of your little snails, I'll have them out on my plate here. The um, next thing you're going to do is you're going to um, melt some butter. Now butter, um, what you're going to want is about a tablespoon of butter. And you can see on a butter package, the, um, there's measurements on the package itself, which is really helpful. So you're going to want to cut off a slice of, of butter that is one tablespoon thick. And you can see that here. You would just want to cut um, right right where that first indicator is for the tablespoon. Okay, then you're gonna put that butter in a bowl and um, then put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds until it's completely melted. You see I have melted butter here. So go ahead and put your, your butter in the microwave until you have it melted. So you'll, then you're gonna set it aside, your um, melted butter, and you're going to make a sugar and cinnamon um, mix. So I've got my sugar and my cinnamon here, and you're gonna use one tablespoon of sugar and put it in your bowl. And then I'm gonna use one quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and put that in my bowl too, and then just mix it up until I have a nice sugar and cinnamon mix here, okay? When you're measuring with a measuring spoon, I'll show you. Um, what you wanna do is make sure you've got just, got it just filled up to the top. So you see how I've got my spoon full of sugar here. Um, you're just going to make sure you don't want it heaping over the spoon unless it calls for a heaping tablespoon. You just want it straight up to the top. 
And in some cases, you might want to take a knife and level it off, um, depending on what it is, just to make sure it's perfectly straight at the top. Okay. So once you have your cinnamon and sugar mix and your melted butter, you're going to take your snails, you're going to dip them in your butter so that the whole outside has some butter on it. And then you're gonna dip it in the cinnamon and sugar until it's nice and covered. Can you see that there? Mmm, that's gonna be tasty. And we'll try it again. So you just roll it in the butter, roll it, maybe tap off any extra, and then roll it in the cinnamon and sugar. You can do the ends too. Mmm, that's gonna be tasty. Oh boy. I'm just gonna do my next two snails here. And I'm rolling it, rolling it in the cinnamon and sugar. Last one, rolling it in the butter, rolling it all around in the butter, and then rolling it in the cinnamon and sugar. Till I've got a nice even coat of cinnamon and sugar on my snails. Okay, I'm gonna set them aside. And it looks like my English muffin pizza is ready here. So I'm going to pop that out of the oven. And there is a delicious lunch or snack. So I hope that you enjoyed our cooking session. Um, if you have any questions, um, just let me know. You can always email um, or call our customer care line and they'll re uh, relay any messages to me that you might have about our recipes. Um, but I think that you'll be able to, um, to make these with some help from your adults. And um, I hope that they're delicious and that you, um, you know, enjoy uh, experimenting in the kitchen. So thank you for joining me for our, for, to learn about making some kid-friendly snacks. And um, I will see you again next week. Thank you so much. And if you make any of these foods, don't forget to, um, if you post pictures of them and you tag them at SMCLCreates with a hashtag, then we'll all be able to see them and we can see if you made some delicious, uh, delicious snacks for yourself and maybe your family or friends. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye.